You should be good to go. Okay, great. Um, thank you for coming this afternoon, everybody, for the March 20th uh, hybrid meeting of the Northampton License Commission. Uh, present this afternoon, my uh, myself, Natasha Yakovlev, Commissioners Helen Kahn and Jennifer Ewers. This meeting is being Zoom recorded. Do we have anybody present for public comment? Please raise a Zoom hand. And seeing no hands, we're gonna move right into the agenda. We have a lottery this afternoon for the all alcoholic license in accordance with chapter 76 of the acts of 2023. And we have received three letters of intent. We have one from Masa Mexicano LLC, one from Gombo, Gombo Oyster Bar LLC, and one from Iconica Social Club LLC. And commissioners, so have you, I'm sure you've had a chance to review the letters and the, um, we did receive an email also. For Helen and Jennifer, yes. you got, sorry, it's weird being on this. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay, great. Um, so as you know, I reached out to Annie earlier this week because after reviewing the letters, I felt that Iconica was not, um, their application wasn't eligible to be part of the lottery based on the fact that they haven't been open for 12 months. Um, as you know, that was communicated to Iconica and that they disagreed and they sent a letter explaining the reasoning for their disagreement. And um, my position stays the same is that they haven't been a business that has been open for a consecutive 12 months. And we discussed that specifically when we decided to allow um, seasonal wine and malt holders to be part of the lottery. The one specific caveat to that was that it had to be a business that was open year round. And I would like to hear your thoughts on that. And you're, I will say it's super distracting to have this big square in front of Natasha's I face. Know. Yeah, I don't know why that's there, but is this? Uh, I, I got it. I, yeah, I just texted him back. Right, thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm in the witness protection program out here behind that box. <laughs> right. <laughs> is that really Natasha? Um, <laughs> yeah. So I'm sorry. So did you say that your your opinion hasn't changed on the? Uh, My opinion has or, not changed. Okay. Yeah. My opinion has not changed. It's. You know, even if um, I think that we had, Annie and I had talked about it and we had thought that they typically closed habitually during the winter, but they, in their um, statement, their email, they said that they did not, that it's really just been the last two years um, for reasons, you know, one being they had a flood and then, then this winter they closed because they don't have a year round liquor license, but still the way they marketed the closing on social media was that they were taking a winter hibernation. Mm -hmm. I thought somewhere on the social media or in one of the posts or something, it did say some it, this long explanation about because they had a seasonal uh, wine and malt, that was why they were taking time off yeah. and that it didn't make financial sense to stay open without um, being able to serve wine and beer. Um, so I certainly, I mean, I understand that. I do understand that logic, I guess. Um, I am questioning why they didn't want to transfer to an all annual license, a uh, wine and malt license, because they did have that option to do that, you know, if, if their concern was not being able to sell for part of the year. Um, I don't know. I, what are your thoughts on? I agree with Natasha, and there are other restaurants in town that have the seasonal license that remain open right so yeah. it doesn't feel fair for me to include iconica at this point yeah i think yeah i i'm i was sort of going back and forth on it but i absolutely understand the logic that both of you you know have presented so so yeah i i think i'd be in the same boat too that i think it may disqualify them from you know the the criteria as we stipulated for this. Okay, so if that is decided, we'll move on to the lottery itself with Masa Mexicano and Gomboy, Gombo Oyster Bar. I'm so sorry, I keep mispronouncing it um, as the two participants. So Annie, okay. I'm gonna let you take so it. So I, 
I have a red ball and a yellow ball. Um, red will be gombo and yellow will be um, masa. Masa. Okay. So red is gombo, yellow is masa. Which way is this going to open? Yellow. Masa. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Congratulations. Yes, congratulations. <laughs> so, Annie, do you want to be in touch with Roberto about his next steps, or do you want to give him an explanation now? I can be in touch with him in the morning. Okay. Okay, that sounds great. Congratulations, Roberto. Then we will move on to item number four. We have applications for short-term liquor licenses for the Academy of Music Incorporated 274 Main Street. This is a wine and malt license with a requested fee waiver for Monday, April 8th, 7.30 to 10 p.m. for Welcome to the Night Vale. Thursday, April 11th, 7.30 to 10 p.m., Colin Hay solo. Friday, April 12th, 7.30 to 10, Pat Bethini. Saturday, April 13th, 7.30 to 10, Best of the Valley Voices Story Slam. Uh, Sunday, April 14th, 7.30 to 10, Daniel Sloss. April 19th, 7.30 to 10, Madison Cunningham and Juana Molina. Saturday, April 20th, 6.30 to 9 p.m. for The Young at Heart. And Thursday, April 25th, 7 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. for The Golden Girls. And hello to the Academy. Hi, Melanie. Hi. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Good, thank you. Good. Um, has anything changed in how things are being done with your service? No. Okay. No, nothing's changed. Okay. Um, Helen and Jennifer, do either of you have questions for Melanie? No, I don't. Yep, no questions. We have all the documents. Okay. And is there a motion on the table? Sure, I'll make a motion to approve the applications for short-term liquor licenses along with the fee waiver um as detailed in item four on the agenda second natasha yes helen yes and jennifer yes okay. all right moving on to agenda item number five we have applications for short-term liquor licenses for forbes library at 20 west street this is for a wine and malt license and the a fee waiver has been requested for Wednesday, April 6th, 3 to 5 p.m. for the Hosmer Gallery Art Reception. June 8th, 2 to 5.30 for an artist reception for Stan Scherer, photographer. And Thursday, June 13th, 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. for the Gertrude P. Smith Trustees Award presentation. Hi. Hi, Faith. How are you? Good. How are you? Thank you. Um, any information you want to share about these events or any changes to your service? Everything is the same. Um, white wine in all cases. I think the trustees award is going to have more and variety and quantity of food, but that's sort of not really the point, except to invite you to come. Right. Okay. <laughs> I did. I missed the staff show and I had really wanted to go see that. Oh, I have. A, I'll send you the Google Drive of photos. Oh, that'd be great. I would love to see it. Okay. Um, Helen and Jennifer. No questions here. <laughs> no questions. And a motion, please. I'll make a motion to approve the applications for short-term liquor licenses, um, along with a fee waiver for the trustees of Forbes Library, as detailed on item five of, on the agenda. Second. Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Great. Thank you, Faith. Thank you. All right. I am going to just jump over agenda item six and go to seven because I know that um, Deb is in person and I'm sure she has a restaurant to open. So agenda item number seven, application for a new entertainment license for Summer on Strong, Lilo Incorporated, DBA Eastside Grill, 19 Strong Ave. This is for outdoors, entertainment, live, amplified, and acoustic music, uh, Wednesdays through Saturday, 5 to 8 p.m. and Sundays, 4 to 7 p.m. Nice. Hi, Deb. <laughs> oh, sorry, Hi, there, everybody. You just need to turn on the uh, so it's green. There you go. That is correct, Tosh. Hello, how are you? Hello. Good, thank you. Um, so what 
this event has been so um, wonderful to watch unfold and it's so organized and you guys are so on the ball. Um, and I know as a commission, we've really appreciated that any uh, noise issues have been addressed and managed internally, which is wonderful because the neighbors seem happy with this event as well. It'll be the same. The same will happen the same as last year. Peter Hamlin's doing the music again, as he did last year. The only difference is we added Sunday from four to seven. Okay. Is there anything else you want to share about the event that might have changed or things you want people to know? Not as of, it's still the same. Yeah. And so what are the dates of the whole Summer on Strong? Uh, the 22nd of May, it opens. All right. And then it goes to the 10th of September. All right. Great. It's great that you have uh, more music, it sounds like, to, yeah. to fill the, all those spots. Green Street Trio will be playing every Sunday from 4 to 7. Oh, okay. All right. Great. And are you still, I'm just curious, are you still accepting <laughs> applications or do you have it set, your your whole music well, uh, schedule the, set? We have the final meeting tomorrow with Peter Hamlin. Uh -huh. um, anybody who wants to play on Summer on Strong should like give it to him, uh, call him or email him mm -hmm. if they would like to play. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Good to know. All right. Um, I don't have other questions about in terms of approving this. I don't know if any. I don't have any questions. I'm excited. Welcome back. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's, uh, it's gonna. I'm very excited. It's it's time for summer. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. Yes, it is. Nice. Uh, I think we're ready yeah. for a motion. All right, I'll make a motion to approve the application for a new entertainment license for summer on strong, um, as detailed in item seven on the agenda. Second. Natasha. Yes. Helen. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Thanks, Deb. Thank you. Thanks, Deb. Thanks, Tosh. Okay, item number six. We have an application for an entertainment license for NoHo Social LLC, 261 King Street. The proposed entertainment is indoors, occasional live music, recorded live acoustic DJ, Fridays through Sunday, 7 to 11 p.m. And who do we have with us this afternoon? I don't see any one. Oh, okay. Any um, here, I believe. Yep. Hi, needed to get unmuted. Peter Pusilowski on behalf of NoHo Social. Uh, NoHo Social began offering live music on a Friday night, unaware that they required an additional license. So this application is to make them legal again. It is uh modest size uh, band it's all local musicians as of now they're only doing it on friday night although they're requesting friday to sunday so they have some flexibility okay and do you know if they have a sprinkler system in place as part of their fire prevention in the building oh boy i don't know okay so that is one question um, that has come up because once live music is added to this establishment, then technically it becomes a nightclub, which triggers an upgrade okay. to systems. And I know for certain, and Annie, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but the one of the upgrades to the system will be that if the fire system is activated, the music is cut off and the house lights automatically come on. Okay. Well, and could we... Uh, I don't have that information now. Could we continue to your next meeting and I will have it then? Definitely. And um, I believe what would be supported also is making make approving this license contingent on one that update and two executing whatever is required by the building department and the fire department. Okay. That would be good. Is that accurate, Annie? Does that make sense based on... Yeah, I, th I think that makes sense. Um, I'm just wondering if you want to recognize the fire chief or the building inspector. Yes, if they They're would. Both here. Yeah, if, um, if they'd like to weigh in on this, I would definitely recognize them. Okay, uh, one minute. Hello. Oh, I'm the fire chief, uh, Andrew Pulis. Hello. Uh, yeah, you, you, hello. Yeah, you, ex you expl explained it correctly. I 
believe that's a fairly new uh, remodel over there. So I, I believe it is sprinklered, but I can certainly go over there and check. Um, the second part of it, I'm not I'm not positive or not. I, they probably don't have the um, the the house lighting to turn on and the music to shut off in in case of an alarm. But I feel like that's a um, fairly easy uh, remedy for them if 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 that isn't in place already. Okay. And you're comfortable from a safety perspective if we approve this contingent on those things happening. Yes, Th those things would 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 need to be uh, remedied first before we approve it. But once those are in place, I believe that's it. If the building inspectors on, uh, he might have stuff to add. But I think you know we were we were in agreement that that those were the things that would need to be uh, fixed. And do Thanks, we have chief? Do you want to recognize the building inspector? Yes, please. Kevin, you should be good. Oh, he's unmuted, but. It... Um... Can I ask in the interim while you figure out this? <laughs> um, I just had a question for the, the fire chief. Is that? Yeah. Um... Or am I going to be in the way of you figuring out? Chief. Can you so okay. go ahead? Okay. Okay. Yeah, I was just wondering. So you were saying this is a this is essentially a pretty new rule. Is this? I'm I'm just so we understand. This is something like any establishment existing or new now as. So they're essentially so they're essentially changing the use at night and turning it into a nightclub. And, okay. And A two okay. use group has different and and Kevin can explain this better because it's in the building oh. code. Okay. But the A2 use group has different sections. So it's an A2 nightclub, A2 restaurant, and there are different there are different rules that need to be followed if it's a nightclub for, for obvious reasons when there's low lighting, there's um, okay. loud music in place. So there's, there's different uh, rules that are in place as far as the fire alarm system and the sprinkler system, et cetera. Okay. Okay, that's okay. good. So, so, for example, live music at a restaurant is different than live music at something that's designated a nightclub. It's, Correct. It's not, it's not just having live music that designates something as a nightclub. Co Correct. Okay. All right. Thank you for that clarification. Thank you, Kevin. The building inspector is having audio issues. Um, I suggested logging out and coming back in so we'll see that jennifer while we're waiting for that did you have any questions or comments i don't have any questions i'm okay but i would like to hear confirmation from the building inspector that that he's comfortable with the contingency contingent yeah. plan. Kevin, I'm asking you to unmute. Do you see anything that you would select to unmute yourself? There he is. Yep, he's, you're unmuted. No. Oh, there we go. Ooh. And you hear me? 
um you're cutting up quite a bit i don't know if it's your um oh. connection okay. can you hear me i think we can now y yep. yeah let's try Here's that Yeah, he has, there's a delay or something. Kevin, can you hear us? Can you hear me? <laughs> I can hear you. Can you hear me? Off and on. Yeah. I can hear you. Yeah, you're cutting out quite a bit. Um, it might just be a delay. Yeah, so if if you can get this, one of the questions that's been posed is- Wait. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> You don't appear to be having a video delay. Can you hear us okay where you are? Nope. I can hear you now. I lost you there for a second. Oh, okay, great. We have you. Um, so one of the questions that's been posed is if you would be comfortable with approving an entertainment license for no host no social contingent on um, confirming either they do have the sprinkler system and or already have the triggered system in place for the lights and the music? Yeah, and if they don't, then they uh, get those installed if they're not already in, in place. Okay, and is, is a um, six month period of time acceptable for that? Or did you wanna see something shorter? Um. So I know me and the chief had discussed since this was going to be a, a new license that it would those would have to be in place before they um, got their entertainment license to perform. Oh, okay. 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 So we won't approve any license today for entertainment until we have confirmation. Verification that, that what's required is it's in place cleared and then the fire alarm system would have to be upgraded to um, meet the requirements of a nightclub. Okay. So I guess we have our answer there and we will um, issue a continuance for this agenda item. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Annie, do we need to vote on that continuance or it's I don't think so. I think we can just um, continue it until the April meeting. Okay. Great. Okay. Then we will do that. Um, and while we have uh, both Andy and Kevin here, I just want to jump up to agenda item number nine because it's a similar issue. This is a agenda number 10. I'm sorry. This is a request for a uh, by serious hospitality group DBA TELUS and satellite bar to modify its existing entertainment license to align with its liquor license. And the request is to extend the hours of operation to 2 a.m. Um, do we have anyone here from TELUS? No, I don't see anyone. Okay. So um, Kevin, it's the same situation since Celis is doubling as a nightclub. We need to confirm that they have um, the appropriate fire alarm system before we can approve this. And so me and the ch chief talked about it since they've kind of already been operating that we were going to give them a six month time frame um, right. within the first two months to get a signed contract with their fire alarm company to do the upgrades. Okay. And then within four months after that, have everything upgraded, installed, inspected, and tested. Um, and then also, we believe that's all part of Thorn. So we believe that that space is already sprinklered. Yep, I think that it is also. Yep. Okay. okay. So we're going to give them a six month time frame since okay. they've already been doing this. Um, so that's that's what me and the chief had discussed. Okay, so they can continue to use their um, current entertainment license. Then the only decision that the commission has this afternoon is if we want to allow them to extend it to 2 a.m. or not. 
Correct. And that they would have to do those yep. upgrades. Yep. Okay, great. Um, Helen and Jennifer, any questions for either the chief or Kevin before we move on to talk about whether or not to extend the timing of this license? I don't think, no, I, yeah. No I question. I no, I thought they were both very clear. Thank you. Yeah, I, I appreciate you both coming to the meeting very much. Thank you. All right, so commissioners, um, so we have had continuous noise complaints and we have done a um, decibel check, I think more than once, Annie can correct me if I'm wrong, but it's always been within the allowable limit. So it seems like the issue at hand is what's happening when people leave TELUS and the noise that's happening in that you know very concrete area behind thorns and sort of bouncing off everywhere. Um, I, you know, on the one hand, if, a, if an entertainment license is extended, maybe it would keep people inside longer, but they're still going to be released at some point in time when the club closes. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on, on this, given that we have had complaints. Oh, really? <clears throat> so, and their liquor license, remind me, their, their liquor license then also goes to two, or it says that it, it last service is at two? Uh, I think or is that one? One thirty. One thirty. Okay. Yeah. Um. And previously, their entertainment license said tell one. Is that oh, okay? So when they I mean, when they requested um, an extension of time to two a.m., the entertainment license did not get extended along with the liquor license. Okay. I mean. This almost seems like just a practical matter, like, of course, to align them, you know, I guess the, you know, and, and is that if, are we looking at like, oh, just extending the entertainment license or are we taking it in concert with, um, you know, these noise complaints, you know, that's almost like a separate issue in my mind. Like one is just like, oh, let's obviously align like where our liquor license and our entertainment license was. It seems like it was maybe an oversight that they didn't extend the hours of the entertainment license. Um, but I guess there's also still the question and I don't, it won't impact sound levels. It'll just maybe impact the time of the night <laughs> that, yeah. that, that, that the impact um, is made. Also, my confusion, I, is it complaints? Has it been from more than one person? Or I know that one person has suggested that everyone feels this way, but I mean, that's what I've seen. I, I haven't heard that there's been more than one noise, it's, more than one person. It's been from one individual, although there's been another individual that has made complaints to or have called the police department on certain nights. Oh, okay. um, And this is just information that I had gotten outside mm -hmm. of any complaints so the complaints didn't come to the commission okay um, so I got, oh sorry i did get a complaint directly from one person but that was a little while ago and it wasn't the person who has been written right concerns okay and so when the police go to the establishment they've also confirmed that it has not been loud or louder than the allowable okay which you know makes things hard for us i mean i'm not there so I don't hear it, you know, I mean, it's, so then there's that question is like, well, is the allowable decibel limits, like, does that need to be adjusted, which is a much bigger issue, you know, because it sounds from what I'm reading, the person who's making the complaints is not saying I'm hearing a bunch of people outside after it closes. She seems to be saying I'm hearing the music, you know, I She's think, right. Hearing from people outside. Oh, and is hearing from people outside. Okay. Yeah. So if it is the people outside, I don't, I think, I don't know, to, in my mind, it's almost a separate issue of whether or not we extend the entertainment license to align with a liquor license, but. So I got yeah. some information back in 2022 okay. from the uh, chief Casper at the time, um, from calls from the police log. Do you want me to? Uh, sure. Are you all interested um, in that? I... So November 5th, 2022, the, um, Someone called and the officer did not find that the music was too loud. November 12th, 2022, officer did not find that the music was too loud. December 10th, 2022, staff agreed to turn down the music. And then um, the following day, there was no officers able to respond. Okay. Now it's back in 2022. Yeah, so I haven't, yeah. I haven't asked for updated information. Yeah. 
Oh, actually, yes, I did. Um, so on January 2023, um, they were advised to turn down the music. February 2023, um, no one responded. Uh, let's see, March 2023, security was told to turn down the music. Um, uh, that's about it. The others are medical and an impaired individual and a 911 hang up. And were all of those complaint calls from the same person? Um, the, no way to know that. the three noise calls were from the same person. And I know that that person was encouraged to reach out to their city councilor. Did they, have you heard from their city councilor with any feedback one way or the other? No. I mean, there's going to continue to be noise complaints no matter what time they stop their entertainment. Is right. my... And a lot of that is uncontrollable based on the location and they, they have no control over people's actions once they leave the establishment. I'm just struggling with sort of the, the lack of evidence for the noise complaint. I, I agree with Helen that um, I feel that we should clean up the licenses so that the times uh, coincide. I, I just don't see uh, the evidence today to take action due to a noise complaint. I agree. Um, I think we're all in agreement then and we're ready for a motion, motion. that's got to include the um, six month period of time for upgrades. Right. Do we need the detail of the two month signed contracts and then six months for an installed and inspected? Okay. Um, I'll give it a I'll give it a shot here. <laughs> um, I will uh, make. Oh, so just so I understand. Okay, so so the extension will take place basically, but and then they also and they have six months to comply with the rest. Okay. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve uh, the request by Sirius Hospitality Group, DBA, TELUS, and the Satellite Bar to modify its existing entertainment license to align with its liquor license, um, thereby extending it to 2 a.m., the entertainment license. Um, and this is contingent, of, or this no, not contingent. Um, it yes. In a, in addition, um, we will require uh, proof of a signed contract for upgrades to the sprinkler system within two months, and proof of installation and inspection at six months. So do it. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Great. Nice. Thank you. Thank you for that, Helen. <laughs> All right. Jumping back then to agenda item number eight. We have an application for a new common Victor license for Add Another LLC DBA Kunick Coffee at 186 Main Street. And do we have anybody here? Hello. Let me uh, do this too. There we go. Hey, Gordon. Hi. Hi. Yep. Uh, you? Danny, Danny. Doing good. How are you doing? Good. Thank you. Good. And sorry, what's your name? Sorry, I'm Dan McKenney. I own Firetech Chocolate Inside Doors Marketplace, and we are opening a new coffee shop in the Merriam slash Dover space uh, that we're calling Super Nick Coffee. Uh, it's going to be coffee, tea, light pastry, and that's, 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 that's about it. <laughs> that sounds fantastic. When do you plan to open? We are realistically shooting for end of April, start of May. We'd really like to be open by Pride weekend, um, mm -hmm. but we're being realistic. And do you plan to be open seven days a week? Do you have a, an idea yet? Uh, seven days a week, 
8 a.m. star, and then that end time fluctuates between 3 p.m. and 6 p.m., depending on the day. Okay. Great. Helen and Jennifer, any questions or comments? No, just looking forward to it. It's yep. always great to have new businesses on the block. <laughs> yep, no, Perfect. documents are complete and we're excited. Thank you, Dan, for filling up with that empty storefront. Yes. It's a great space. It's got a lot of history and we're really excited. It's a great location. That'll be great for you. Thank nice. you. Then I think we're ready for a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the application for a new common victualler license for add another LLC DBA tunic coffee at 186 Main Street. Second. Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. All right. Thank you. Good luck with the opening. Moving on, we have item nine, an application for a new automatic amusement device, General Cleaners DBA Florence Laundry, 194 Pine Street. This is for one prize crane and a claw machine. And do we have somebody here? Yes, hi. Uh, my, hi name is, uh, my name is Eric Hasse. Uh, I'm attending on behalf of Bob Nuttleman today, uh, who is the applicant for the automatic amusement device for Florence Laundry. Um, here to answer any questions you might have, uh, but also wanted to introduce myself to the commission. Uh, I'm the owner of Lucky Duck Vending. Uh, we're an amusement vending company. Uh, we're located in Franklin County, but we've got machines all throughout the Pioneer Valley, uh, Southern Vermont, and Southern New Hampshire. Uh, what we do is we place uh, mini claw machines and other amusement devices in, you know, public businesses for guests to use. Um, so I've been working with Annie on those in the past, but I um, wanted the opportunity to say hello to the commission and introduce myself. Well, thank you. It's nice to meet you. Likewise. And yes, until um, Absolute Zero and Nice Tea, we had never had a entertainment device application for amusement before. Uh, I am glad I could be the first. Okay. <laughs> the, first. the first and so far the only. You have no competition right now. Excellent. That's what I like to hear. Uh, yeah. <laughs> see the face behind these claw machines. <laughs> uh, I appreciate all the help. It's been fun. Yeah, thank you. I don't have any questions. Okay, great. Then if there's nothing else, we're ready for a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the application for a new automatic amusement device for general cleaners, DBA, Florence Laundry, as detailed in item nine on the agenda. Great. Thank you for coming, Eric. All right. Thank you all. Take care. You too. Bye-bye. All right. Moving along, item number 11. We have cancellation of the license held by Calvin Theater Group and Eric Schuer in accordance with the executed settlement agreement dated May 15th, 2023. So we have, and um, Colin and Jennifer, you have seen the the emails that we Annie has sent us. And so we feel confident that in the event And um, and then moving on to another agenda item to decide what to do with it, um, or I, I don't really see a reason to do the other option, which is to not cancel it, unless Annie right. has any, any other um, wisdom on that. No, I have no reservations. <laughs> <laughs> um, commissioners, do you have any reservations doing this? No, I'm strongly in. I'm older and wiser now. No, so I think I think because I'm under the impression that it won't impact the arrangement with the 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 new hopefully owners of the Calvin that I I I think the time has come to cancel it. Yes. This is an easy one. I think we're ready for a motion. I'll make a motion to cancel the license held by Calvin Theater Corp and Eric Schuer in accordance with the executed settlement agreement dated May 15th, 2023. Second. Natasha? Helen? Yes. 
and Jennifer. Yes. Uh, item number 13, discussion and possible vote to determine the means of issuance of the remaining all alcohol liquor license in accordance with chapter 76 of the acts of 2023. So of the three special act licenses, one is in limbo with the parlor room. One has just been lotteried to Masa Mexicano and that leaves the third. Correct, Annie? Yes. Okay, so we have one special act license and now we My, since we have for this lottery, we had two viable applicants um, enter into the, the lottery for the other license and obviously only one could get it. So my, my recommendation would be to um, offer this license, the third special act license to Gombo Oyster who did not win the lottery. A hundred percent agree. Yep, I agree. Okay. Then... 